Karen, finally! Oh, I hate being stuck on the plane for that many hours, but we are back home! We have returned from the Phoenix Forest aviary uh, to our wonderful zoo, which really, you know, now that I'm looking at it, we could, uh, we could do with a little bit of a zoo entrance. It's not the most impressive zoo entrance, I'm gonna be honest. Oh, and it looks like Echo the Second is a little bit thirsty. We'll have to see if she is still so busy challenging Wynn that she is not paying attention to herself. And let's see what's going on. Oh, good, 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 good. What you see right here in turn are two of the species that we have collected from the Phoenix Bird Forest Aviary, or I should say sanctuary. And these are our two little red-eyed tree frogs, which I'm very excited to have. And then right over here, this is actually our little collection of Sphinx macaws. And oh my gosh, they were so expensive to get shipped here. I couldn't believe how expensive they were. And holy days! Has old lady Lemming Nommer given birth again? Lemming Nommer, what are you doing, old girl? Oh my gosh, look at all the little clams. <gasps> look how cute that is. I should collect the shells for my mom. My mom actually loves clam shells. But Lemming Nommer appears to be giving birth yet again. I think that she is just having us on when she says that she's going to go and, and uh, expire pretty soon. Because she seems to be doing just fine, popping out pups. Yep, climbing under the birth tree. I see how it is. Maybe we should add more like flowers and stuff under the birth tree so it's a little bit more comfortable because they always seem to want to give birth under here. Is that living number? I'm pretty sure. I don't know. Maybe it's just a lazy seal. All right, let's stay over here for just a second. The baby's just going to slide out any minute now. Pretty sure this is her. Okay. Is there a baby? Huh. Maybe this isn't Lemming Nomer. Lemming Nomer! Oh, she's giving birth! Oh, it was! It was! She's busy giving birth again! Is this her new pup? Did it just like pop out by like the side and I didn't notice? Lemming Nomer! Congratulations! You snuck that pup out, all right? Oh, all right. And let's check on Echo real quick. And the lemmings are getting pregnant! Yay! So we're going to have to check on the lemmings. Oh, fudge knuckles. Yes, so we are having this problem where the wolves get so distracted challenging each other that they actually get very sick. So we're going to have to send Echo the Second out too. Huh. But that's okay. I guess she just is not uh, going to relax when it comes to her pack here. And if you can't fit into the pack, then you can't stay. It's just kind of just kind of like that simple. <gasps> Did you see that? Did you see that? They were carrying the little bone. Ooh, when the howling is starting. That's awesome. And the lemmings need their exhibit tidied up a little bit. So let's see. Do I have anybody assigned? Keeper Hansen, I think. Okay, you are now assigned to lemmings and caribou and our penguins. So that should keep Keeper Hansen quite busy. Let's go ahead and check on our lemmings and then in turn we really need to get started on building the new exhibits. Hello little lemmings, don't you worry. There's some more lettuce, cleaning up your poop. Oh, lemming, lemming, lemming. So many pregnant lemmings. Oh, and Wynn is now pregnant. So let's grab a lemming. I have one name for the lemmings that I have managed to write, written down. Write down? I wrote down in turn. And that is Lemon, Lemon the Lemming, which I thought was actually absolutely adorable. So there we go, Lemon the Lemming. And I've actually been thinking in turn, if you would like, I would like to name some of these lemmings after you. So if you come up with a really awesome fact about animals, uh, particularly, particularly, let's see, um, to start off, Let's say any of the animals, the catfish, the penguins, the lemmings, the caribou, the red-eyed tree frogs, any of the animals we have in the zoo, the wolves, the foxes, if you know a cool fact about it, put it on my desk along with your name and then we will figure out, uh, we will name the lemmings after you guys because I think that would be pretty good. Name the lemmings after the interns and then we'll see how they have the babies and how life progresses that way and I love this slide, I can't wait to see the kids use it, but, huh. Busy day, busy day. But we need to get our animals out of their crates. And so I was thinking for our awesome little tree frogs, we should make a little indoor exhibit that they can walk through right over here. So let's go ahead and figure out how we're gonna set that up for our tree frogs. Hmm. Cause, oh, and we did get some aviary pieces for the birds. 
how could I forget that? We did invest, it was a pretty, pretty significant investment, I'm not gonna lie in turn, but we did invest in some aviary pieces uh, for the birds so that we can try to get a really nice aviary set up for our Sphinx, our, our Sphinx macaws. So let's see, that one down now, and then, See, those are just the normal glass panels, but that would actually, that would work quite well along the back. I've never built an aviary before, so we're going to try building an aviary for the birds and an indoor exhibit uh, for our frogs, and we'll see how that turns out. So let's see, and I'm going to need, is it that one, or, hmm, okay, I'm going to need this, I think, and then aviary walls, aha, we're figuring this out. We're getting there in turn, don't you worry. So then we're gonna get the aviary walls installed. Let's see, this is a concrete wall, don't want a concrete wall. Yeah, let's go ahead and we'll get like this wall. All right, so we'll have to put some research into it and we'll get this wall. All right, so that'll give us the aviary research. Oh, and we need this actually, the invisible border that we can line up along certain places. So. We'll let that get started, and while we put research money into that, we are actually going to figure out how, let's see if I can find the little glass roof, how to build a small indoor enclosure for our frogs. Doesn't need to be very big. Uh, actually, I think it would be down here. Oh man, it's not often that I try messing around with something this complex. Normally we just do those giant open enclosures, but I'm really feeling it, so let's see. Is it over here? No, no, here maybe? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's in here somewhere, or not. All right, in turn, yeah, this is, aha, there they are, I knew it was here. All right, so what we're gonna do is we are, oh no, Norwegian Lemming 5 is sick, why? Why, you look fine. You seem pretty fine. Is it the poop? The poop from so many lemons? No, why are you sick? I'm healing you. I'm healing you. I think there was too much poop. Hopefully the zookeeper will get over here and take care of that. I'm really worried about our little lemmings. All right, so, uh, and we have to work on our zoo entrance. Woo, guests love our zoo. That's a good thing. All right, so let's see. All right, all right, all right. Oh, white tail birth just, er, white tail birth. The white tail deer just gave birth. Phew. So much going on at once. All right, so what we want to do is get a small glass roof installed. I don't think it needs to be very big, but I want it to be big enough that people can kind of walk in and look at the animals and walk back out. So probably yay big. And then we'll need to scooch it forward just a little bit. Yeah, that's more what I'm thinking about. So let's see, maybe a five, what's a six by six? Getting a little bit bigger there. 7x7. Seven seven. If we do a 7x7 seven seven, then we might have enough room in the future to add in like another amphibian. Hmm. Hmm. I think for now we'll stick to a 5x5 five five, or let's, yeah we could get away with a 6x6. Six six. We'll do a 6x6 six six area and we will try to build a nice little indoor, indoor spot for our wonderful little frogs. So let's see if we've got some nice stone fencing. We do. I think we want it this tall or I think this tall. So let's use these stone walls and go ahead and make like a little building. And we need it one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, wait, let's, okay, let me see. Like I said in turn, I don't do this often. One, two, three, four, five, there we go. But see, we learn together. That's what this is all about. One, two, three, four, five, and there we go. So we've got that little bit worked out, and then we need to get, dun dun dun, let's see, up, up, up with this pathway, and now down, and down, okay, so this would cover the bottom, okay, got it, got it, and then we need, like, this glass elevated path, could work, actually, oh, do you not show anything? Oh, it's mysterious, all right, what about this one? There, I see it. I see it just barely. So it makes this interesting little thing right here. And then if I come over here, can I get it up on top? Glass roof, five by five. 
it's much trickier than it looks in turn. <laughs> Just say it, much trickier than it looks. Ah, sigh. But like I said, we learn together because this is a pretty cool trick. And if I can figure out how to do this, that would be very amazing. All right, so let's try again. We need a little elevated path and a little platform. Let's just see what this does real quick for a minute. All right, made a little platform. And if we try again, oh, look at that. Look at that, intern. The glass roof fits snug as a bug right on top. I love it. And if we take all, well, if we take, oops, not the wall away. So I know we can take those away. And then we'll come back over to our elevated paths. And do we have like an invisible one? Canopy. Oh, well that leaves a, little, a weird little block. So let's try again. Maybe glass elevated path? Mm, still leave something behind. I could have sworn I have pyramid roof component. Ooh, we could have just used that and made it interesting. Well, maybe that's how we will expand it in the future actually. Aha, let's see. How to get you on. Ha! We did it! Yay! We did it! Oh, I'm so proud of us, intern. I'm so proud. You have no idea how proud I am right now. All right, so then let's see. We're going to put. Doo -doo 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 -doo. We'll put the path right in here. And then if we go like this, we can get inside and work around here, no problem. We're just going to send the path straight through here because we're gonna use this whole area for where the frogs are gonna go. Let's grab a glass fence that will cover that spot. Let's see, glass, glass, glass. Oh man, I feel like we are on the up and up of ultimate fanciness in turn. That's what I feel like we're doing. So this is a good one. Yeah, this will work. This is a nice one. I wish there was one with like a black border that I could use though. See, you get that picky. I know it seems weird in turn to get that picky about different aspects of the zoo building, but believe it or not, it has a major impact on how people perceive the zoo. Like, what's this? It's like a little rock thing. Pretty darn cool. I like the little ivy growing up of, up it, uh, but it's gonna like kind of poke through the roof and be a little funky donkey. What about this? No, nope, no, nope, same thing. But yeah, how people perceive the zoo is how they start perceiving the animals. So you have to have the facilities looking nice. If you show them that you put that amount of care and dedication into these creatures, then by con like the connotation, they're going to want to put that much care into the creatures. Ooh, that's much nicer. Nice dark fencing. I like it in turn. I like it. Ooh, a little brick rounded fencing. Nice. All right. So that's much better. Great. Great, 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 great. Now we can grab this awesome little island jungle path and send it right through here there we go and what we're going to do is on the other side we can put in some little like gift cards we can put in there we go we'll put in like little stands we'll put in flowers we'll put those kinds of things in there and then over here for our beautiful red-eyed tree frogs we are going to make a nice tropical rainforest biome so tropical rainforest do the little dry dirt that you would find on the bottom. All right, there we go. And now I'm going to actually dig out, if I can find it. I want some, maybe Montana Rainforest? Yeah, I want some dark moss, just to retain the humidity in here for these guys much better. And let's see what we've got available for them. Ooh, a nice misty spring. So we'll put a nice misty spring in here to really get that humidity up. As I was saying a couple days ago when we were over at the Phoenix Bird Forest uh, Sanctuary and turn, these frogs are really amazing little guys because they have such tiny lungs that they're not able to get their full oxygen need just from their lungs. So they truly do need to be able to have uh, exposure to a lot of moisture in the air to breathe through their skin and they breathe through their skin that's one of the big ways that they get their water supply so let's see can we make like a little pond over here for these little guys there we go all right let's get a very tiny little shovel very tiny in turn and we want to, to gently smooth this train if we can can't smooth it can we flatten it okay let's try flattening it this way Good job, in turn. Come on. Eh. Eh. Okay, can't do anything there. Let's just gently a little teeny across. Oh, 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 oh! Actually, it's doing very good. Okay, Montaigne. 
Montan. There we go. There. Hopefully that tiny little pond of water will be enough for the frogs without taking up too much room in their enclosure. And let's see what we can whip up for them. So we're going to give them some little insects to eat. And we'll put the insects right over here and here so people can watch them eat. Oh, looking nice. Looking nice. And they might use this chameleon tree. It says they might. So let's go ahead and we'll add in the chameleon tree to see if they'll enjoy that. And now comes one of the fun parts in turn. Now we're going to add in a few plants. I don't think we'll be able to fit in very many trees because this is such a small little exhibit spot. So not too many trees. No, not even that guy. Oop, but we could put in a few tiny ferns along the back like these big guys. All right, what about a little one? Nope, can't fit that one in there either. Oop, we can almost fit this tree fern in here. So we'll put it kind of over here. It's a tight fit, but it can just squeeze in. There we go. And then let's get some little bushes. I think the bushes will be able to fit in a lot more for this little guy. Uh, or I should say the two little girls because these are two females. We have two females with us today. And, oh, look at those little New Guinea impatience. Uh, let's see. Oh, I love these guys. Oh, but the toadstools, of course. It's nice and humid in here, so we've got to have plenty of little mushrooms. So lots and lots of little mushrooms sprinkled around. All right, ooh, nice bright little pop of color there. I like that. And there we go, now we're getting like some little grasses. Good, good, look at that. All right, what about these guys? Oh, nice little water plants that we could add in. Give them a little bit of cover over by their little water spot, I like it. It's these kinds of details that really brings their home to life and really helps people imagine what it's like to be out in the wild, to be a little wild frog. There we go. Put these along the back. Or should we put, I'll show you something really cool, a backdrop in just a second in turn. I wonder if there's a smaller lily pad. There's probably a smaller lily pad and we'll probably use the smaller of the lily pads uh, in just a little bit. Ooh, that's a perfect bush for the corners. There we go. Look at that. Takes up the backdrop just right. Ooh. And some nice ferns. You gotta appreciate a nice fern in turn. All right, these guys are all different variety. These guys are adorable. I think we should be okay adding a few of them in. Sometimes they seem to cause some issues with us, but I think they'll be okay this time. Lots of color, lots of color. And actually, I think we'll remove this traveler's tree because we've got something really cool we can put up along the back. It's actually special backdrops. Look at these beautiful special backdrops. Three by one, let's see, three by twos. And then we can put these backdrops in here. Three by one. And they make a beautiful, beautiful little enclosure. Should we put them up on the, the brick as well? Let me check what it would look like by twos if we put them up against the bricks up oh, can't quite manage it can't quite manage it but hmm it looks better than nothing so let's see if I can put this one over here oh my gosh intern look at that look at that so nice so nice the only thing I kind of want to do a little bit of is cover up there just a little bit of cover in the front because it was a little bit exposed for the little frogs and now our red-eye tree frogs have a really awesome little indoor enclosure we need to make sure we add in a gate it just occurred to me i'm like oh yeah we need a gate so that the these zookeepers can get in and help us take care of this little guy these little girls i mean they're both two little females all right then let's go ahead there we go now we've got a little gate in there and we'll need some names for these lovely ladies because we've got two little red-eyed tree frogs now. So there's one. And there's the other. All right, and now, let's see how they like it. Eee! Jump on in. Hi, guys. Oh, they're so cute. Welcome. Welcome. I know you were just elsewhere, but you are now, you are now here. 
You're now here inside of Quest Zoo. Welcome, you guys. Oh, I love these. I love these. Look at them. Look at them. Little frog. You're so cute. Nom nomming. Your little, your little insects. Oh, absolutely adorable. Already eating their insects. Checking that out. Hopefully people will be coming to check them out pretty soon, which means we need to put in some benches. We need to put in some things for them to eat. We need to start building our aviary for the, the Spix macaws over here. And we're gonna have to make sure that there's donation boxes and all sorts of fun things. We could probably even sneak a bathroom over here for the guests. Not to mention we can start thinking about what we're gonna put for our zoo entrance too. Ah, so I'm really looking forward to that intern, but we're gonna take a quick lunch break and I will meet you back here tomorrow morning, or I should say after lunch, what am I saying? Uh, it's that jet lag. The jet lag just makes me feel so weird. But I will meet you back here. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. Oh my goodness, it's so pretty. I will meet you back here after lunch and we will deck out this area, maybe with an ATM because the guests are complaining about that. And then we will continue working on the aviary so that our Spix macaws will be very, very happy in their own beautiful enclosure. So I will see you then in turn. Bye-bye.